Good evening, IndyCar fans. It is August 5th, 2018. Sorry for the delay by a week or so. Nevertheless, what a race Mid-Ohio was this past Sunday with Alexander Rossi taking his fourth career victory and closing the championship gap lead from Scott Dixon by less than 50 points. With Nap on board, he had the tools, the parts, and the two pit stop strategy to come out on top. It was definitely a victory for Honda to celebrate because while they're based in Japan, they have an American base in Ohio. Now that's good news. We'll see if the next race he will carry the momentum to close the gap some more, if not overtake Scott for the championship lead. At the same time, this past Sunday across the pond was the Hungarian Grand Prix, won by Lewis Hamilton for a second race in a row after Germany before that. Still, compared to the German Grand Prix, Ferrari, who I was cheering on with a Scuderia Ferrari Club of Philly with, did one position better than in Germany. Second. So it's not over yet for Vettel. He can still catch Hamilton. We will see if the Prancing Horse can beat the Silver Arrows in the next round in Belgium later this month. And it's also nice to know that even though it's already been going on for a while, that NBC is covering the Indy 500 next year for the first time, and that'll be so sweet! The NBC bird is the word, as I've said before, and the ABC mouse is out. <laughs> also, to get back to the Hungarian Grand Prix, it's nice to know that even though we just barely finished in the top 10, it was also Fernando Alonso's birthday, so Feliz cumpleaños, belatedly, Fernando. Viva España, indeed. And we are hoping that you'll come back to the Indy 500 next year, especially since you've won Le Mans this year and the Monaco Grand Prix twice already before that. It's interesting because right now there's so many speculations going on around Fernando about his future. While, of course, F1 is the bigger breadwinner compared to any other um, racing series in the world, he wants to be competitive and he's not getting very competitive in Formula 1 at this time and all he has to do is just come back to Indy and win it and then he like, say so you can just go back to Formula 1 and do whatever that's my opinion that's what I say you ought to do plus um, if he were to come back full time he would have quite an interesting twist to go with it for those who haven't heard yet 2018 this year will be the last year that the Infineon Raceway will host an IndyCar race starting in 2019 that track is out, and what is in? The twisty Laguna Seca. Now that's the twist with its corkscrew. <laughs> Ooh, didn't you dizzying up about that? I'll be excited to see how well drivers who have never raced Indy cars on that track before will do it. Oh yeah, and before I... Actually, I meant to say, before that concludes this round, I would say that this cap... It may be just a coincidence that it's NBC, but this was my grandfather's cap. I inherited it from him um, shortly after he passed away um, last month, and um, that's why I'm wearing it today to honor the fact that NBC is on for indie cars from here on for who knows how long, and to honor my grandfather, who uh, you might have heard me in my last video give salute to. Now that concludes this indie car post-race review of Mid-Ohio. Join me next time for when the Indy cars go to the Tricky Triangle of Pocono on August 19th. I'll be there and in style. See you around. I'm Aaron Cylinder, firing on all cylinders. <laughs>